<sighs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Art of Worldly Wisdom. Commentary and discussion brought to you by your host, as always, Darth Hideous. Ahoy, Cat Ninja and Suze, the early arrivers in the chat. Ah. <sighs> Hope everyone had a good weekend. I could have done better this weekend. Not gonna lie to y'all, I've got a bit of guilt weighing pretty heavy on me right now. And I owe a significant apology to someone very near and dear to me whom I was unnecessarily uncalled for cruel to and part of discernment and part of wisdom is knowing when you fuck up and this time like, I don't usually regret too many things I say. I really wish I could have this one back, because it was really... It was really a fucked up thing to say, and it was really uncalled for. It was very out of line. And I'm very sorry for that. Yeah, this... I was completely in the wrong, and I hope I never say anything like that again. Hey, Frog. Hey, Squab. Huh. Yeah, but doesn't help much in the aftermath. Hopefully this message gets across. Uh, I regret this one. I'm sorry. Really am. Anyway. Cannot change the past. Cannot unsay what was said. So. Must keep. Endeavoring to push forward. And do better. And hopefully at some point. I can figure out how to do that. <sighs> If I recall correctly, last time we left off, we left off on 205. I decided to start the stream earlier because I was feeling ambitious and I thought maybe if I give myself some extra hours. I can get through some extra rules because <sighs> as much fun as this book has been so far, it feels very repetitive and it feels a lot like the last one I did. And I'm just kind of ready for it to be over now. So we're going to get through it. I don't think you make anyone uncomfortable, Sus, but if they're uncomfortable, fuck them. Like, everyone's welcome until they's asked, they, they's asked to leave, but uh, Frog's not even here. Frog is on my... Uh, He's on my Rumble channel. Shout out to the Rumble gang. Squab also is half on the Rumble, half on the YouTube. So, like, if you're not seeing people, it's because they're probably in Rumble. I'm just saying. Don't don't feel like they're 
avoiding you or anything. It's it's literally that they're on the Rumble side. And if you don't aren't familiar with my Rumble channel, I have a Rumble channel. I do. And you can find this stream right there on my Rumble channel. Just for the record, shout out to the six watching on YouTube, the two watching over on the X Bird, and what do we got on Rumble? Seven. Yeah, that's what's up. My Rumble gang. My Rumble gang. What's up, Cool Gamer? Maybe Cool Gamer will be able to hang out for more of the stream because I did it early. Devo in the house. My stony Oklahoma. What is up, my guy? Uh, if y'all don't know Devo's Weed Chronicles and you like crazy Midwest guys that smoke a lot and talk about all types of randomness, you need to check out Devo. Like that's a that's an interesting uh, dynamic. Devo in Upstate. And all the stuff he does, like he's got kind of a wild channel of his own. I like to, I like to go hang out with them guys. I haven't had a, much of a chance to lately since I've been back doing the super busy, but I get around when I can get around. You know how it is. But anyway, I suppose. Hold on, I think I might be able to do that. Uh, yep. Cat Ninja's on the ball. Thank you, Cat Ninja, for being my ace, uh, my, my crack team mod, you know. Yeah. That's Devo's channel. You can check him out over at Devo's Weed Chronicles. It's Devo and Weed, and my friend Suze is over there from time to time, and Upstate's there, and... These are really good folks, a lot of them. Hold on, let me go ahead and pin my Rumble link to the top of the channel because I'm encouraging people to make the bait and switch to Rumble. They've got cookies and stuff. It's the dark side. Anywho. We got through 205 of these last we left off, so let's continue with 206 because this is going to be interesting because 206 is know that there are vulgar natures everywhere. And this hit me like a brick in the freaking head when I opened up the book and realized this is where we left off. Uh, It's getting better. Rumble's getting better. I mean, it has its issues and it's constantly under attack so that's not helpful but they are improving. I understand if you're not a fan though. I'm, I, I think it still needs a little more work but it's getting there. It's getting there. It's definitely way better than it used to be. But why did this hit me like a brick, you guys asked? Because I was thinking about vulgar natures and know that there are vulgar natures everywhere. And my initial instinct was even in your own trash heart, which mm, problematic for me. Uh, even in Corinth itself, even in the highest families, everyone may try the experiments with it may try the experiment within his own gates. But there is also such a thing as vulgar opposition to vulgarity, which is worse. Now, what the hell is vulgar opposition to vulgarity? The special, this special kind shares all the qualities of the common kind, just as bits of a broken glass. But this kind is still more pernicious 
it speaks folly, blames impertinently, is a disciple of ignorance, a patron of folly, and past master of scandal. This is kind of how I feel right now. Hmm. For the record, this is through the Rumble app. The mobile app is absolutely 100% garbage. Uh, if you're not using a PC, you're using a mobile device, using a mobile browser is definitely preferable for functionality's sake. <coughs> Especially if you're trying to use the chatting and stuff, but at least that's the, what it's been for me as well. But bad. This this first rule is the smack in the face because that's. I think exactly what I did was a vulgar opposition to vulgarity, and I did the pernicious thing. You need not notice what it says, still less what it thinks. It is important to know vulgarity in order to avoid it. Whether it is subjective or objective, for all folly is vulgarity, and the vulgar consists of fools. I feel like a fool. That's for damn sure, so... Shout out to Gracien for having one ready for me. I often preach keeping your words sweet because you may have to eat them. And now that I'm chewing on them, they're kind of bitter, kind of sour, and I'm kind of choking on them. It's not, it's not my favorite thing. Two oh seven. This is probably some advice I could use right now. Be moderate. For anyone who knows me any length, I have a tendency to trend towards the extremes. And I don't tend to know how to find balance. One has to consider the chance of a mischance. The impulses of the passions cause prudence to slip. And there is the risk of ruin. A moment of wrath or of pleasure carries you on farther than many hours of calm. Well, it'll definitely get you somewhere. And often, a short diversion may put a whole life to shame. Wah, wah. The cunning of others uses such moments of temptation to search the recesses of the mind. See, wouldn't it just be better if everyone, like, stopped and thought about things before they did and said things? What's up, Wolfram? It's been a minute since you've been able to wipe your paws in this den. Good to see you, though. It really is. They use such thumbscrews as I want to test the best caution. Moderation serves as a counterplot, especially in sudden emergencies. Much thought is needed to prevent a passion taking the bit in the teeth. And he is doubly wise who is wise on horseback. 
He knows the danger may with care pursue his journey. Light as a word may appear to him who throws it out, it may import much to him that hears it and ponders on it. It's definitely, yeah. I mean, this is the problem that I had. Exactly this. I was not listening. I was letting my own damn passions and emotions and frustrations and anger and resentfulness get the better of me. Took a big fat L. Might be the worst in living memory. <sighs> 208 is do not die of the fool's disease. Huh. This is disease now? The wise generally die after they have lost their reason. Fools before they have found it. To die of the fool's disease is to die of too much thought. Some die because they think and feel too much. Others live because they do not think and feel. These are fools because they do not die of sorrow. The others because they do. A fool is he that dies of too much knowledge. Thus some die because they are too knowing. Others because they are not knowing enough. Yet though many die like few. Many die like fools. Few die fools. Hmm. You think you know some shit. And then you find out you don't know shit. Or that knowing shit is a problem? I don't think uh, there, I mean, if there's a case for too much knowledge. <laughs> I I don't think many people die of, of that foolishness. <laughs> At least maybe not anymore. And maybe once upon a time when people did more thinking, people could die of too much thinking as a fool, but mm, no. No, I'll, 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 I'll cheers to that. That seems wrong to me. But I'll cheers to it anyway. Salud. Yep. Continue, Mr. Darth. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about this one, but it feels like it's wrong. And to the extent that it was ever right, it's not valid anymore. Uh, 209. Keep yourself free from common follies. This is a special stroke of policy. They are of special power because they are general. So that many who would not be led away by any individual folly cannot escape the universal failing. Among these are to be counted the common prejudice that anyone is satisfied with his fortune, however great or unsatisfied with his intellect, however poor it is. Or again, that each being discontented with his own lot envies that of others, or further, that persons 
of today praise the things of yesterday and those here the things there. Everything past seems best and everything distant is more valued. He is as great a fool that laughs at all as he weeps as that he as he that weeps at all. Ah. So appreciate your own damn spot right where you are. Don't worry about that which was cuz that is not what is. Don't concern yourself with that which is far away because it has no effect on where you are right now. Learn to just appreciate your own situation where you are. Don't don't let envy be a destroyer. Oh my goodness. Two ten. Okay, buckle up for this one, y'all. Know how to play the card of truth. Tis dangerous. Yet a good man cannot avoid speaking it. But great skill is needed here. Spoiler warning, y'all. I just realized that I don't have the greatest of skill. That's kind of the theme of today's show. The most expert doctors of the soul pay great attention to the means of sweetening the pill of truth. Uh, a spoonful of sugar helps the bad medicine go down. For when it deals with the destroying of illusion, it is the quintessence of bitterness. A pleasant manner has here an opportunity for a display of skill. With the same truth, it can flatter one and fell another to the ground. It's a double-edged sword, and it cuts both ways. Matters of today should be treated as if they were long past. For those who can understand a word is sufficient. And if it does not suffice, it is a case for silence. Princes must not be cured with bitter draw drafts it is therefore desirable in their case to gild the pill of disillusion uh, careful with the truth y'all it's a very helpful tool and a decidedly violent weapon probably one of the most dangerous weapons I've ever seen. Okie dokie. <sighs> but a lot of times, being able to tell someone the truth in the manner that they're going to take it and not shoot the messenger. Mm, it'd be very skillful in your actions and your approaches with this. Hey, Puffer. Good to see you, too. Welcome to the art of not being a dumb fuck. I am Darth Hideous local dumb fuck. And I'm getting learned today. I have a bit of a guilty conscience. And I've been very unwise. Ah. 211. Some steel reserve. In heaven, all is bliss. In hell, all misery. On earth, 
between the two, both one thing and the other. We stand between the two extremes and therefore share both. Fate varies. All is not good luck, nor all mischance. The world is merely zero. By itself, it is of no value. But with heaven in front of it, it means much. Indifferent at its ups and downs is prudent. Indifference, my bad. Nor is there any novelty for the wise. Our life gets as complicated as a comedy as it goes on, but the complications get gradually resolved. See that the curtain comes down on a good denoun denouement? That's a new one. Gotta love the vocabulary lesson. Uh, Technicolor yawns are not good weapons there, Squab. And that's gross, just for the record. Anyway, let's do a head count. It looks like we've got three gangsters kicking it on X-Bird. Six YouTube gangsters. And 14... Rumble Squad Gangsters. So I love it when I see them win. Sorry, guys. I'm Team Rumble because, well, Rumble has afforded me opportunities that YouTube is playing elitist on. Like, the ability to just do as I'm doing. Ah. <sighs> Two twelve. Keep to yourself the final touches of your art. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, well, we'll get up for the win. Thank you, Cat Ninja. Also, it's dope that people started watching on X, like. For the first, like, six, seven streams there, nobody did. And I was just like, oh, what's the point? And now people do. And that's the point, though. <laughs> so shout out to those friends. This is a maxim of the great masters who pride themselves on this subtlety in teaching their pupils. Oh, this is one of those. Uh, yeah, once Rumble fixes their platform, lots of people won't be here. I mean, I'm trying to set up my Rumble community so that uh, by the time Rumble fixes its platform and the mass exodus goes... I'll already have an established thing there. Plus, I mean, like, I didn't have to have a thousand subs to be monetized there. They literally let me be monetized when I did my first live stream. And all you need to do a live stream is five followers. So, YouTube and you're stupid. You need this many watch hours and this many uh subscribers and, and all this it, elite bullshit before we'll even think about like letting people like i don't know support your channel piss off youtube not that i actually am doing it for that but i mean i'm doing it the the content creation anyway or the i don't know what this is i <laughs> I, I struggle to call this content creation because it doesn't feel like I'm creating anything. Like It's just really more of a impassioned discussion, though. But yeah, I mean, as soon as Rumble gets their shit together, yeah, hit all of it. I mean, I mean, 
to get there, like, they'll never be YouTube. I know that. I, I would never expect them to get to YouTube level at all. But the more and more YouTube goes the way it's going, like, the more and more people are incentivized to go somewhere else. And uh, <laughs> there is definitely value in diversification because I know people who've been kicked off of YouTube. I know people who've been kicked off of YouTube more than once. I know people who have got like a billion and a half strikes on YouTube. Their name is Cool Frog. It's literally Frog. That's that's who I'm talking about. But I mean, why just appeal to the YouTube audience when I can go ahead and try to get an audience going on uh, Twitter Bird? Uh, I mean, X Bird, my mistake. Uh, or YouTube Rumble, like all of it. Like, have some diversity. Because it's our strength, right? Ah, uh, now anyway, two twelve. Uh, keep yourself the final touches of your art. Like uh, this beginning part here is kind of the the quandary of the the master who teaches the pupil all the pupil knows, but never teaches the pupil all he knows and usually for good reason uh they could be it's just it's easy to just not have ad revenue and say what you want youtube got damage on that note no i mean seriously like yeah they can keep the stupid ad revenue like but in order to be a part of their like monetization program at all you've still got to jump through all the hoops to get to it and like i i don't care to monetize but it like respect to rumble for not having stupid barrier to entry of course rumble is small too like a small creator on youtube they're a small fish in a big pond and it makes sense that they wouldn't try uh, try to do the same limiting bullshit. Like, if you're just going to be the exact same as YouTube, why would anybody use your platform? So I, I, I respect them for what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's get learned. Uh, one must always remain superior. Remain master. Like, yeah, that's why you never teach your students everything you know. One must teach an art artfully. The source of knowledge need not be pointed out no more than that of giving. By this means, a man preserves the respect and the dependence of others. In amusing and teaching, you must keep to the rule, keep up expectation, and advance in perfection. Well, Huh. Imagine. I'm I'm trying to amuse and teach, and I have to keep up expectation and advance in perfection. That's that's a big ask. Okay, let's go. Uh, to keep a reserve is a great rule for life and for success, especially for those in the high place. Well, I mean, I'm not in exactly a high place. I'm in a pretty comfortable place. Holy crap. I just noticed that the viewership is doing the split. We got nine on the expert right now and eight on the YouTube. Well, they have no interest in having creators like me on their platform. They made that perfectly clear. They have silenced so many people who sound just like me that... I know, like, if I were to apply to be monetized and they did a, uh, ah, oh, Baki, good to see you, my dude. Just in time and with a spot on comment, he says, instead of don't outshine the master, which is literally law one of the 48 laws of power, 
This one is do not be outshined by your students, but also keep don't keep like keep the black belt level information for much much later, like and allow them to learn for themselves as well. So never teach them everything because there's always always useful to have something. Packed in the, uh, you know, just a, the just in case file. <sighs> okay. Two hundred thirteen. Oh, 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 oh. Teach a man to fish and you won't be needed. Yeah, that's why you don't give a man a fish. You don't teach a man to fish. You promise a man his neighbor's fish and he'll vote for you. That's how communism works. Just, just promise a man his neighbor's fish. Ugh, 213 is know how to contradict. And if there's one thing I can do, it's be a... Uh, a, a contradictorian, if you will. Uh, a chief means of finding things out to embarrass others without being embarrassed. The true thumbscrew, it brings the passions into play. Tepid incredulity acts as an emetic on secrets. It is the key to a locked up breast and with great subtlety makes a double trial of both mind and will. A sly depreciation of another's mysterious word sends out the profoundest secrets. Some sweet bait brings them into the mouth till they fall from the tongue and are caught in the net of astute deceit. By reserving your attention, the other becomes less attentive and lets his thoughts appear while otherwise his heart were inscrutable. An affected doubt is the subtlest picklock that can that curiosity can use to find out what it wants to know. And emphasis on the subtlest doubt. Yeah, but I mean, how easy is it to get somebody to talk when you just uh, some someone uh, they they hint at a thing. And then you just say, oh, really? And you don't say anything further. Don't ask any. Just just give them the old, oh, really? And then shut up. And then watch how quickly, like, all the things that they were being mysterious about suddenly come pouring out of them. No, really. <laughs> it's a whole thing. Ah. <sighs> Also in learning, it is a subtle plan of the pupil to contradict the master who thereupon takes pains to explain the truth more thoroughly and with more force. So that a moderate contradiction produces complete instruction. Ah, I mean, if you definitely want to get someone to... Explain themselves further, just insinuate that they're wrong. Politely disagree. Give them the good old, oh, really? Are you sure? And then watch them go. So learn how to poke at people in just the right manner to get them to spill. Two fourteen.
Do not turn one blunder into two. Well, I mean, if there's anything that I'm good at, it's not following this rule. <laughs> uh, it is quite usual to commit four others in order to remedy one. Or to excuse one piece of impertinence by still another. Folly is either related to or identical with the family of lies. For in both cases, it needs many to support one. The worst of a bad case is having to fight it. And worse than the ill itself is not being able to conceal it. The annuity of one failing serves to support many others. A wise man may make one slip, but never two. And that only in running, not while standing still. Oh, I love the ending of that. Because you should... Definitely not be slipping if you're standing still. That's that's ridiculous. But I mean, this is a metaphor. This is not being uh, literal in the in the literal sense. That is. And usually, if you're not doing anything, you shouldn't be fucking up too bad. Like, it's hard to fuck up not doing anything, but, oh, you know, God, if you do. <laughs> uh. But, yeah, be careful to, like, uh, not in attempting to fix your mistake, fucking up even worse, or committing an additional fuck-ups. A double whopper is too much unless one has a dog. I don't think that's a thing. But I wouldn't eat a double whopper, because that's... Burger King is gross. No lie. It used to be better, but it's gone way downhill. Two hundred fifteen. Watch him that acts on second thoughts. It is a device of businessmen to put the opponent off his guard before attacking him, and thus to conquer by being defeated. They dissemble their desire so as to attain it. They put themselves second so as to come out first in the final spurt. This method rarely fails if it is not noticed. Let, therefore, the attention never sleep when the intention is so wide awake. And if the other puts himself second, so to hide his plan, put yourself first to discover it. Prudence can discern the artifices which such a man uses in the text he puts forward to gain his ends. He aims at one thing to get another, and then he turns round smartly and fires straight at his target. It is well to know what you grant him, and at times it is desirable to give him to understand that you understand. So be careful of the guy who is looking to give you everything in a deal. And take very little on their own behalf. Because there's usually a caveat to that. If a person is acting as if they might be a complete sucker, 
There is every chance that you're getting conned. I'm not telling you how this is going to manifest because I don't know. But be aware. If it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Correct, Wolfram. That is exactly what I was thinking. And if it feels like they're giving you everything and getting nothing in the deal, then you might want to look at the deal a little bit closer and see what's really going on. See what they're really playing at because there's a good chance that there's a deeper, longer game that you are not seeing all of. Two sixteen is be expressive. Well, I should be good here at least this time. This depends not only on the clearness, but also on the vivacity of your thoughts. Okay, well, big ass words, vivacity, love it. Some have an easy conception, but a hard labor. For without clearness, the children of the mind, thoughts and judgments, cannot be brought into the world. I mean, he says clearness like he didn't mean clarity. Many have a capacity like that of vessels with a large mouth and a small vent. Others, again, say more than they think. Well, that might be me. I might be in the camp of saying more than I think. And I might should serve to shut up more and say less. Others, uh, resolution for the will, expression for the thought, two great gifts. Plausible minds are applauded, yet confused ones are often venerated just because they are not understood. And at times, obscurity is convenient if you wish to avoid vulgarity. Yet how shall the audience understand one that connects no definite idea with what he says? Well, you're going to connect that guy either very mysteriously as one who speaks in parables, or you're going to regard him as a senile old man like Joe Biden who speaks in mumblies and gaffs. I guess you have to use your discernment to figure out what what people are getting at and and maybe if you want people with less discernment to understand you, you have to be a little more expressive about what you're getting at. But But don't overdo it. Don't be Darth Hideous. <sighs> well, here's a good one. That's something we can all enjoy. 217, neither love nor hate forever. Trust the friends of today as if they will be enemies tomorrow and that of the worst kind. As this happens in reality, let it happen in your precaution. Do not put weapons in the hand for deserters from friendship to wage war with. On the other hand, leave the door of reconciliation open for enemies, and if it is also the gate of generosity, so much the more safe. The vengeance of long ago is at times the torment of today and the joy of over the ill we have done is turned to grief. Oh, that should be a period. I don't know why they finished with a comma there. I blame the editor. If you can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with bullshit. That's a good one, too, Wolf. From like all of these, these clever phrases that say everything that our wordy friend Gracien here says, but I like this because yeah, 
not all friends are going to be your friends forever and not all enemies are going to be your enemies forever and to understand both of these concepts simultaneously hey hey and look right on the part that i never learn because i think most people have morals higher than a flea but most which i'm nice and good at good evening to you inya i mean i have the tendency to not know how to wield the truth or to wield a level of cruelty with my words that i mean that which you can lift someone up with you can tear them down with <laughs> Darth Hideous is out for this stream. Sub Sig. Uh, and I'll always be your friend too until I'm your enemy and then your friend again later on down the line. That's usually how it works with me. Ah, uh, 218. Oh my god, this is just not my day, guys. Never act from obstinacy, but from knowledge. Oh my goodness. Mm. All obstinacy is an excrescence of the mind, a grandchild of passion which never did anything right. Uh, there are persons who make a war out of everything. A real banditi of intercourse. This is a scathing rebuke on my obstinate behavior. All that they undertake must end in victory. They do not know how to get on in peace. Such men are fatal when they rule and govern, for they make government rebellion and enemies out of those whom they ought to regard as children. They try to effect everything with strategy and treat it as the fruit of their skill. But when others have recognized their perverse humor, all revolt against them and learn to overturn their chimerical plans. And they succeed in nothing but only heap up a mass of troubles. What what the hell were we Oh obstinate, yes. That's yeah, that's me. Being right allows one to be obstinate. Yeah, but I'm obstinate when I'm wrong. And I'm often the most obstinate when I'm as far from right as I could possibly be. People are going to human. Some are be just better at forgiving and some need forgiveness. And yeah, and maybe some need to both. <sighs> Since everything serves to increase their disappointment. They have a head turned and a heart spoiled. Nothing can be done with such monsters except to flee from them. Even to the antipodes where the savagery is easier to bear than their loathsome nature. Uh, this is a scathing rebuke. I hate this for me right now. Also, I should highlight this and make note of it because there's one of these that would have been helpful for me this week and it would have been not acting in obstinacy. Chimerical is monkey-like savagery? <laughs> Darth Hideous versus his own stupidity is the mental force duel, sir. Uh, Graciana is just here to educate my f foolish ass, apparently. And to think, when we started this, I thought myself 
more wise than foolish, but as we get on, it seems that the percentage of fool is greater than I had anticipated. We'll call since we're almost at the seven since we almost been here for an hour. Nine and nine between YouTube and X. Twelve in the Rumble Gang. I what is that, thirty? Yeah, thirty people. And I'm sure only a couple of them are duplicates. Ah, two hundred and nineteen. Oh man, <laughs> what? A, the night's not getting any better, is it? Do not pass for a hypocrite. Though such men are indispensable nowadays, be considered rather prudent than astute. Sincerity in behavior pleases all, though not all can show it in their own affairs. Sincerity should not degenerate into simplicity, nor sagacity into cunning. Be rather respected as wise than feared as sly. The open-hearted are loved but deceived. See, this is the problem with wisdom and cunning, is they kind of run side by side in those who are wise, prudent, and discerning have great capacity for simplicity and cunning and a sly nature. Like, And it's hard to temper that when you have great capacity for it and it is easy to tool that as an instrument to attain your ends. The open-hearted are loved but deceived. The great art consists in disclosing what is the thought to be deceit. In the golden age, simplicity flourished in these days of iron cunning. The reputation of being a man who knows what he has to do is honorable and inspires confidence. But to be considered a hypocrite is deceptive and arouses mistrust. Uh, miracle adjective existing only as the product of unchecked imagination. Fantastically visionary. So something very much in the realm of uh, nonsense and bullshit. <sighs> it's hard when you are of a wise and discerning nature to not sometimes appear a hypocrite because sometimes it's a lot more of the do as I say not as I do like repeal the Fed even though I'm not repealing the Fed and people are like well why aren't you leading a charge to repeal the Fed well I know what happens to people who do that so I'm not doing it that doesn't mean we shouldn't repeal the Fed though and replace it with nothing like Ron Paul said yeah don't send marijuana to Saturn like they're a defunct company. I don't even think they're in business anymore. If they're my ally friend, I'm honest as a Stark. If they're competitors, they get the Lannister. That's that's the problem though. Is the Lannisters were powerful because they knew that like being seen as a man of great honor and integrity is to open you up to a great level of weakness for the people who would use sly and cunning to deceive you. It's a whole problem. <sighs> Two 
20. Speaking of the Lannisters, if you cannot clothe yourself in lion skin, this says use fox pelt. I would say use wolf pelt because Baki is making Game of Thrones references. To follow the times is to lead them. He that gets what he wants never loses his reputation. Cleverness when force will not do. One way or another, the king's highway of valor or the bypath of cunning. Skill has affected more than force. And astuteness has conquered courage more often than the other way around. When you cannot get a thing, then it is time to despise it. So, the quickest route to uh, getting uh, what you want is to uh, act like you want something different. So that that thing is much less guarded and much less protected. And then, boom! Hit the feint. Cut the left, strike, and... There you go. So when using the brute force, that's why they said fox pelt because the fox is considered the the moniker of cunning. Although wolves are just as, if not more so, cunning than foxen. That is for sure. But definitely, if you can't get it through the brute force of the lion, then you get it through the sneaky. Use use your wit and wisdom. Two twenty one. Do not seize occasions to embarrass yourself or others. Well, I mean, I mean, there are some men stumbling blocks of good manners, either for themselves or for others. Hand in the air. That's me. They are always on the point of some stupidity. You meet with them easily and part from them uneasily. A hundred annoyances a day is nothing to them. Oh my goodness, it's almost like this is written about me. Ugh. Their humor always strokes the wrong way since they contradict all and every. Well, that's not so much me. They put on the judgment cap wrong side foremost and thus condemn all. That's me. Yet the greatest test of others' patience and prudence are just those who do no good and speak ill of all. There are many monsters in the wide realm of indecorum. I am an indecorum realm monster. So far, I don't think I've had any of these go by way except for like being expressive. <coughs> two, two, two. 222. Reserve is proof of prudence. And I don't think I'm going to win this one either, guys. The tongue is a wild beast. Once let loose, it is difficult to chain. It is the pulse of the soul by which wise men judge of its health. By this pulse, a careful observer feels every movement of the heart. The worst is that he who should be most reserved is the least. The sage saves himself from worries and embarrassment and shows his mastery over himself. He goes his way carefully. A Janus for impartiality and Argus for watchfulness. Truly, Momus had better place 
the eyes in the hand than the window in the breast. That's a lot of symbolism in that one. With your Janus and your Argus and your Momus. Ah. <sighs> But yeah, I mean, sometimes it is literally just better to say nothing. Uh, what is the thing? Uh, preferable to keep quiet and be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Something like that. That's this. Uh, that's That's sometimes the best thing to say is just shut up. Ah, <sighs> 223, be not eccentric. Well, that cuts at least half of you out, because I know some very eccentric folk in this chat, specifically. Like, this is kind of a gang of eccentricities, so to speak. Uh, neither from affectation nor carelessness. Many have some remarkable and individual quality leading to eccentric actions. These are more defects than excellent differences. Ooh. So your eccentricity your eccentricity is not a cool, unique, quirky feature. It's a it's a defect. Janus, <laughs> noun slang, ginormous anus. I don't... Okay, we'll go with it. I think it's Janus, though. Uh, many have some... Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, just as some are known for some special ugliness, so these for something repellent in their outward behavior. Hi, I'm Darth Hideous, the eccentric idiot. Such eccentricities simply serve as trademarks through their atrocious singularity. They cause either derision, derision or ill will. Ugh. So nobody likes eccentric fucking weirdos. Don't be a fucking weirdo. Be just be a reasonably normal person and appear well-adjusted, you fucking weirdos. Meanwhile, you're all my friends and you can be as weird as you want here. We embrace eccentricities and we don't find it repugnant. Or derisive or ill-will-inducing. I mean, I think I said it once. Janus and then Janus. Giant anus. <sighs> 224. Never take things against the grain. No matter how they come, everything has a smooth and a seamy side and the best weapons and the best weapon wounds if taken by the blade while the enemy's spear may be our best protection if taken by the staff hmm. many things cause pain which would cause pleasure if you regarded their advantages there is a favorable and an unfavorable side to everything. This would be the silver lining in all those clouds. The same thing looks quite different. Oh, wait. No, I'm, I'm, I missed the whole paragraph. The cleverness consists in finding out the favorable. The same thing looks quite different in another light. Look at it, therefore, on its best side and do not exchange good for evil. 
Thus it haps that many find joy, many grief in everything. This remark is a great protection against the frowns of fortune and a weighty rule of life for all times and all conditions. My, oh, my. Oh, boy. Oh, we have the lag. So, yeah, going against the grain, making things unnecessary hard by interacting with them unnaturally. Tis the best to just... I like the... Uh, I, I, I like the analogy that he used here about, like... Uh, the most useful uh, defense is the enemy's spear if you happen to be holding it by the shaft. And the best weapon wounds if you, like, grab it by the blade. Like, uh, sometimes, like, you fuck up with shit. Leave the sheep alone! I don't know what you mean by that. I ain't messing with the sheep, squab. And if anybody's in here messing with the sheep, uh, that's a problem. That is a problem. <sighs> yes, take Swab's advice. Leave the sheep alone. Oh my goodness. Sorry, y'all, I am lagging a bit. Do not exchange good for evil. That's the most important part to remember about all of this. A weighty rule of life for all times and all conditions indeed. 225. Know your chief fault. What if you have a lot of chief faults, though? There lives none that has not in himself a counterbalance to his most conspicuous merit. That's the, uh, the the darkness and the light in everybody. If this be nourished by desire, it may grow to be a tyrant. Can confirm. Commence war against it, summoning prudence as your ally, and the first thing to do is the public manifesto. For an evil once known is soon conquered, especially when the one afflicted regards it in the same light as the onlookers. To be a master of oneself, one should know oneself. If the chief imperfections surrender, the rest will come to an end. Oh, I've got a lot of imperfections, so it's really hard to discern which one is my chief imperfection. Because they all rise in their own time. And I don't think any one of them is truly tied too closely to the others. Like, they're all connected, but I don't think they're completely dependent of each other. That makes it a problem. It makes it a problem. <laughs> Okay. Look at what's that tab, damn it. Okay. 226. 
Take care to be obliging. Well, if you're a good friend, you would already know this. And if you need to work on being a better friend, I should read this. Most talk and act not as they are, but as they are obliged. To persuade people of ill is easy for any, since the ill is easily credited even when at times it is incredible. The best we have depends on the opinion of others. Some are satisfied if they have right on their side, but that is not enough. For it must be assisted by energy. To oblige persons often costs little and helps much. With words you may purchase deeds. In this great house of the world there is no chamber so hid that it may not be wanted one day in the year. And then you would miss it however little it is is its worth. Everyone speaks of a subject according to his feelings. <sighs> being obliging, being polite, being kind. It costs little and helps much. And it is a lot easier for someone who is obliging and someone who is rude as hell to attain any assistance they require. Because when you are someone that people like, they, they are naturally more inclined to help you out. And you can gain more. <laughs> so don't just be on the side of right. Be actively promoting it. I can see why that would be helpful. Two twenty seven. Oh, my goodness. How simple. Do not be the slave of first impressions. Uh, that's Hugh Janus. Hugh Janus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sup what a name uh, but why aren't you wanting to be the slave of first impressions have you ever heard the phrase never judge a book by its cover like sometimes sometimes like the the saying is also true that you never get a second chance to make a first impression but oftentimes first impressions are a hundred percent of deception. So be very, very careful because some marry the very first account they hear. All others must live with them as concubines. But as a lie has swift legs, the truth with them can find no lodging. We should neither satisfy our will with the first object nor our mind with the first proposition. For that were superficial. Many are like new casks who keep the scent of the first liquor they hold, be it good or bad. If this superficiality becomes known, it becomes fatal, for it then gives opportunity for cunning mischief. The ill-minded hasten to color the mind of the credulous. Always, therefore, leave room for a second hearing. Alexander always kept one ear for the other side. Wait for the second or even third edition of news. To be the slave of your impressions argues want of capacity 
and is not far from being the slave of your passions. Uh, I think we have discussed this one quite often. Oh, hey, Beck. Interrupting to say hello. Good to see you. Oh, hello, orange cat. <laughs> I believe this orange cat requires my assistance, y'all. I will have to step away for a second. Talk amongst yourselves. Don't leave. I will be back in the very shortly. Oh, no, uh, I had the door sealed. I didn't realize he uh, was sleeping over there. So, anyway, he's God. Catch, catch God. But yeah, people, things aren't always as they seem. And you would do well to be aware that. <laughs> Especially with the first time someone is going to show you something, they're going to try to show you something they want you to see. Always be open to a second, third hearing on all types of things. <laughs> because it's not usually the first thing you hear that's going to be the whole truth. It's not usually going to be the first thing you see either. No. I'm not going to tell you what he said, but it was not nearly that polite. Oh my goodness. 228 is do not be a scandal monger. Still less pass for one. For that means to be considered a slanderer. A slanderer. Not a slander river because it's not a thing. Do not be witty at the cost of others. Oh, I've been guilty of this. I poke in some fun. And it's meant as jokes, but it is easy but hateful. All men have their revenge on such a one by speaking ill of him and as they are many and he but one he is more likely to be overcome than they convinced evil should never be our pleasure and therefore never our theme the backbiter is always hated and if now and then one of the great consorts with him, it is less from pleasure in his sneers than from esteem for his insight. He that speaks ill will always hear worse. Yo, one of my favorite new YouTubers who covers 90s show actors troubles. Breaks this rule. I mean, candle mongering is big business in YouTube land. Drama sells. I don't mind if this, I don't mind this if it's all jokes though. But I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. Some of the most hurtful shit can be said in jokes because the truth is often that like it's a it's a powerful weapon so be careful is all i'm gonna say because you never know who's how you might break by 
continent shit. Like flat earth. Hey now. The flat earthers. I mean, I'm not going to get into the flat earth shit. I'm just not going to do it. 2.30. Plan your life wisely. Well, it says plan out your life wisely, but does anybody really hear, has anybody ever actually planned out their life? Like, by a show of hands, like, does anybody... If you haven't grown up being picked on, my jokes are not for you. Well, I grew up being picked on and picking on people, so Flat Earth sounds less crazy every day, though. Well, that's the thing is, the more crazy everything else sounds. That's my weakness. I love watching YouTube drama content, but the actors being covered get mad. Well, I mean, I can imagine that they would. Like, I've watched The, the Quarter Pounder before, and he's got a severe... Lo love affair with uh, Brie Larson, and it's gross. Uh, no, it's an inside joke. In your mirrors, uh, two thirty is uh time to go to the dentist. Two thirty, two thirty. Ha 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 ha. Rebecca's full of dad jokes. It's it's, it's her fault. <laughs> mm. So. Like, kudos to you if you've ever planned out anything in your life at all, because I don't think I know anyone who has. Uh, not as chance will have it, but with prudence and foresight, without amusements, it is wearisome, like a long journey where there are no ends. Manifold knowledge gives manifold pleasure. The first day's journey of a noble life should be passed in conversing with the dead. We live to know and to know ourselves. Hence, true books make us truly men. The second day should be spent with the living, seeing and noticing all the good in the world. Everything is not to be found in a single country. The Universal Father has divided his gifts. And at times he has given the richest do dower to the ugliest. The third day is entirely for oneself. The last felicity is to be a philosopher. Don't be a philosopher, yo. Someone tried to convince me babies came out of the arse. If you take flat earth the same way. Oh, my goodness. I mean... I don't know the earth isn't flat because I've never fallen off the end of it. I'm just saying. Wait a minute, that was 219. Or 229. This is 230. I can't count in Roman numerals because Roman numerals are excessive amounts of letters to make numbers. Regular numerals would have been preferable. Ah. Uh. 2.30 is open your eyes be times. Not all that see have their eyes open, nor do all those see that look. To come up to things too late is more worry than help. Some just begin to see when there is nothing more to see. Hindsight is twenty twenty. They pull their houses about their ears before they come to themselves. It is difficult to give sense to those who have no power of will, still more difficult to give energy to those who have no sense. Those who surround them 
play with them a game of blind man's bluff, making them the butts of others, and because they are hard of hearing, they do not open their eyes to see. There are often those who encourage such insensibility on which their very existence depends. Unhappy steed whose rider is blind, it will never grow sleek. Okay, that's a lot. Did y'all see that? Like... Hi, oh, look at that. That's a clever little entrance. Mole Mousin. <laughs> Blind man's bluff has fought me so much. Them people need to dig a hole and climb in. Uh, I don't. I don't make people the butts. Of others games like that's be seeing things for what they are don't want to be a blind rider on a horse don't want to be a horse with a blind rider unfortunately sometimes that happens but that's another story entirely uh. Uh, but it is difficult to give sense to those who have no power of will. Like, that would be the the normies, the drones. And to waste your energy on these people who have no sense and no power of will and just don't have the vision to see anything. It's a giant waste of time trying to tap on their head. They have to figure their shit out. To be trusting is a fault. Them blind men leading is out of cowardice. Uh, a lot of times, yeah, cowardice and self-interest. Uh, 231. Never let things be seen half finished. No spoilers, y'all. They can only be enjoyed when complete. I said no spoilers. All beginnings are misshapen. And this deformity sticks in the imagination. The recollection of having seen a thing imperfect disturbs our enjoyment of it when completed. I, I don't really know if that's a thing, but I don't like people seeing shit that I'm working on until I'm done doing it. Uh, to swallow something great at one gulp may disturb the judgment of the separate parts, but satisfies the taste. Till a thing is everything, it is nothing. To see the tastiest dishes prepared arouses rather disgust than appetite. Let each great master take care not to let his work be seen in its embryonic stages. They might take this lesson from Dame Nature, who never brings the child to the light till it is fit to be seen. I mean... I don't know about y'all, but, like, if I'm actually working on something, I don't want you to see it till it's finished. That would be gross. Spoilers are gross. Don't do it. For all the reasons that it's said in here, and just because it's gross, don't do it. Two thirty-two. Have a touch of the traitor, not traitor, 
Trader. Life should not be all thought. There should be action as well. I mean, usually you have to do shit in order to get shit done in life. So if you just sit around thinking about doing shit, you get very fucking... Yeah, like miscarriage in embryonic stage. Like, uh, I mean, some of the some of the words in in this book are like the, the 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 visuals that are given are kind of extreme, but I lo I love them for that fact. But yeah, very wise folk are generally easily deceived for while they know out of the way things they do not know the ordinary things of life that's these people who are learned with no common sense no street smarts as it would be because they don't do anything in the real world they just spend their time in their intellectual bubble on youtube and rumble and expert now at variable times throughout the week uh smash that like button hit that follow button if you haven't and turn on the notification bells if you feel so inclined no one wants to see that yeah no one wants the spoilers like show me the thing when it's done like, ah, I'm trying to think of a good example. A half assembled car usually comes to mind. Like, that's not a car until you've got all the parts refitted and put back together and you put the damn body back on it. It's just a frame and a bunch of parts, and it's not going to work like that. Uh, that's a bad example, but it's best I can do for the uh, for the time. Be back later if you don't end stream before then. Well, I started early specifically because I have a mind that I want to go a little bit longer with this stream than I have with the previous ones. I just was feeling a lot more motivated when I got started. Yes. Definitely, uh, babies do their best being born when they're due, uh, and also when they're alive. Like we we don't we don't really we don't really want to see that beforehand. Ah, <sighs> anyway. Uh, they do not know the ordinary things of life, which are much more needful. The observation of higher things leaves them no time for things close at hand. You know, like the mundane of the day-to-day -day living. Since they know not the very first thing they should know, and what everybody knows so well, they are either considered or thought ignorant by the superficial multitude i'm not gonna lie to you uh i have a sibling who i feel like this is very applicable to a uh, brilliant intellectual college educated and whatnot i don't think that this same person has a very in touch like view of the world because out of their little enclaves all well which are all over the place but they're the same type of thought bubble enclaves doesn't have any real world experience or not not much to speak of anyway uh so their perception of reality is just all off because well they don't have the ability to really consider that things are not as they imagine them to be in places that they refuse to go. And it's a problem. Like, it is a problem. And 
if one is going to have good discernment, one must be uh, learned and also experienced. Like, have a little bit of life experience to go with your your book wisdoms. It's the true, like, giver of discernment is the doing. <clears throat> 233. Let not the proffered morsel be distasteful. Otherwise, it gives more discomfort than pleasure. Some displease when attempting to oblige because they take no account of varieties of taste. What is flattery to one is an offense to another. Ah. So this is about knowing, like, the customs and tastes of your audience. So that, like, I mean, you wouldn't offer... Uh, the wonderful people from the board of PETA, a bunch of delicious beef and cheese on PETA bread, because you would know that what they stand for. I would do that because I'm a shit heel, and I think that shit's hilarious. But if one were trying to, you wouldn't like offer tasty, tasty beef morsels to vegans, and you wouldn't offer nasty, gross vegan food to normal people. And in attempting to be useful, one may become insulting. It often costs more to displease a man than it would have cost to please him. You thereby lose both gift and thanks because you have lost the compass which steers for pleasure. He who knows not another's taste knows not how to please him. Thus it haps that it may that many insult where they mean to praise and get soundly punished, and rightly so. Others desire to charm by their conversation and only succeed in boring by their loquacity. Loquacious, that's a fun word too. I enjoy your time. Keep it up. I like your motivation. Ugh, I mean... This book is an interesting discussion. And it's good to have people in the chat that are actively like engaging in thinking about the things. Because some of these things, I'm just like... Yeah, I mean... These things are so obvious that they should just be, like, worldly wisdom is common sense, but so many of them, I think I've, I might be overthinking to a point where it's just like, I miss the plot of these because I'm doing too much thinking, and a lot more of these are just like, duh, stupid. I don't want to bore people with my loquacity, though. Ah, 234. Never trust your honor to another unless you have his in pledge. Well, first of all, when someone else pledges you their honor, understand that people lie. So take that with a grain of salt, especially in today's culture where honor is no longer revered and is kind of a dead concept. Arrange that silence is a mutual advantage. Ah, uh, yes, a secret is best kept between two people, provided one of them is dead. Disclosure, a danger to both. See, that's the best way to keep a secret is when uh, that secret getting out can harm you both. Like, 
the old the old partners in crime adage, like uh, the thing that guarantees the silence is the fact that the person who has to hold their tongue has as much to lose as you do. Ah, uh, where honor is at stake, you must act with a partner so that each must be careful of the other's honor for the sake of his own. Never entrust your honor to another, but if you have, let caution surpass prudence. Let the danger be in common and the risk mutual so that your partner cannot turn state's evidence. This says king's evidence, but we don't live in a kingdom. We live in states now. So don't let them turn snitch is exactly what this says. Make sure that if they're going if they're going to take you down, they're going down with you. Absolutely. And that's about all the fucking good honor is right here. Uh, the revealing process in the movie The Skulls, both teammates, people revealed the worst they have ever done. I haven't seen The Skulls in a long time. <coughs> mm. Oh, wow. Imagine 235 being something so simple as know how to ask. Because it seems like such a simple concept, right? What do you want to bet that asking isn't as simple as one might think? With some, nothing easier. With others, nothing so difficult. I have trouble asking. For there are men who cannot refuse. With them, no skill is required. But with others, their first word at all times is no. No, absolutely not. 100% inequivocably, irrevocably, no. With them, great art is required. And with all the prop, uh, propitious my moment. Uh, so, prepotence is probably, like, ideal moment. Surprise them when in a pleasant mood, when a repast of body or soul has just left them refreshed, if only their shrewdness has not anticipated the cunning of the applicant. The days of joy are the days of favor, for joy overflows from the inner man into the outward creation. Uh, I can absolutely confirm that with a lot of people, if you want to get something out of them, you got to catch them at the right day and the right time. My mother be like this. Like, there are things that's like, is she going to say agreement to 99 out of 100 times? Unless you catch her in a bad mood. And then it's immediately no. And there's no amount of explaining that's going to get you to a, a serendipitous, uh, a actual useful result, except for to wait until a better time. And a lot of times you know the vibe going in. You just don't bother asking because there ain't no point. It is no use applying when another has been refused since the objection to a no has just been overcome. Nor is it a good time after sorrow. To oblige a person beforehand is a sure way unless he is a big old meanie head like Darth Hideous. I'm just going to tell you no, so don't ask. No is the answer. Two thirty six. Make an obligation beforehand of what would have to be a reward afterwards. 
Oh, this kind of plays right into the one we just read, doesn't it? This is a stroke of subtle policy. To grant favors before they are deserved is a proof of being obliging. Favors thus granted beforehand have two great advantages. The promptness of the gift obliges the recipient more strongly, and the same gift which would afterwards be merely a reward is beforehand an obligation. This is a subtle means of transforming obligations, since that which would have forced the superior to reward is changed into one that obliges the one obliged to satisfy the obligation. But this is only suitable for men who have the feeling of obligation, since with men of lower stamp, the honorarium paid beforehand acts rather as a bit than as a spur. So be careful who you're obliging with, because some people, they just, they don't get it. They have no self-awareness. This, this only works with people of character and integrity. You're not going to get the average dipshit to understand, like, I do this for you, and now you owe me. Because they only think about themselves and what they can get from you. They don't care anything about returning the decorum because, well, like I said, they only care about themselves. Ah. 237. Never share the secrets of your superiors. This will get you this will get you fucked right here, so pay attention to this one. You may think you will share pairs, but you will only share pairings. Many have been ruined by being confidants. They are like sops of bread used as forts. They run the same risk of being eaten up afterwards. It is no favor in a prince to share a secret. It is only a relief. Many break the mirror that reminds them of their ugliness. We do not like seeing those who have seen us as we are, nor is he seen in a favorable light who has seen us in an unfavorable one. None ought to be too much beholden to us, least of all one of the great, unless it be for benefits done him rather than for such favors received from him. Especially dangerous are secrets entrusted to friends. He that communicates his secret to another makes himself that other's slave. With a prince, this is an intolerable position which cannot last. He will desire to recover his lost liberty, and to gain it will overturn everything, including right and reason. Accordingly, neither tell secrets nor listen to them. Ah, You know, the funny thing about secrets is... If they're secrets, they're not being told. And if they're secrets... They're not being heard. They're not meant to be seen, heard, or told. That is why they're secrets. So shut up, shutting up. Amen. Ah. 238 kind of reminds me of know your like primary fault and this is know what is wanting 
in yourself. Many would have been great personages if they had not had something wanting without which they could not rise to the height of perfection. Secrets hardly exist. Yeah, the <laughs> funny thing about that, uh, they they do tend to. Uh, uh, how how would you know if there were a secret? Like if you heard it, is it really even a secret at all? It is remarkable with some that they could be much better if they could be better in something. They do not perhaps take themselves seriously enough to do justice to their great abilities. Some are wanting in geniality of disposition, a quality which their entourage soon find the want of, especially if they are in high office. Ooh, this is how corruption spreads. Some are without organizing ability. Others lack moderation. In all such cases, a careful man may make of habit a second nature. So know what you lack and be working on it. If you're going to get where you're going, you got to have everything you need to get there. If you're going to stay there, you need to have it even more so. So tis useful. Huh. 239. Do not be captious. It is much more important to be sensible, to know more than is necessary blunts your weapons, for fine points generally bend or break. Common sense truth is the surest. It is well to know, but not to niggle. Oh my goodness. Uh, get me canceled, why don't you? Lengthy comment leads to disputes. It is much better to have sound sense, which does not wander from the matter in hand. So be concise. And be to the point. Common sense truth is the surest truth. It's really evident because you can see it all around you. And it's more of a blunt hammer than a sharp sword. Ah, 240. Make use of folly. How the hell do you do that? The wisest play this card at times, and there are times when the greatest wisdom lies in seeming not to be wise. Well, I guess I might get one win out of this stream today after all. You need not be unwise, but merely affect unwisdom. To be wise with fools and foolish with the wise were of little use. Speak to each in his own language. So be a fool amongst the fools and be wise amongst the wise. Not the other way around. He is no fool who affects folly, but he is who suffers from it. Ingenious folly than the pretended is 
Oh, no, that's not ingenious. Uh, my mistake. Ingenuous folly rather than the pretended is the true foolishness, since cleverness has arrived at such a pitch. To be well liked, one must dress in the skin of the simplest of animals. Blend in with the surroundings that you're surrounded by. That way you do not stick out. Welcome to the mix, Yak Happy. Other new names that I haven't seen. First time? Smash that subscribe button if you're into these really weird niche type of coverage of conversations. Uh, if Hugh Jane is still hanging around, like you can subscribe too if you want. We'd be about it. Three days a week at least. Uh, four days if you count the Rumble stream, but that's not really my stream, so I don't count it. I do do it every week, though, though so far. I've been here before. Oh. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Ah. Sometimes I don't remember everybody who isn't here on a regular basis, so that's my B. Uh, 241, put up with raillery, but do not practice it. Uh, okay. I don't know what raillery is. The first is a form of courtesy. The second may lead to embarrassment. To snarl at play has something of the beast and seems to have more Audash audacious raillery is delightful to stand it proves power oh so is this like uh fucking with people to show oneself annoyed causes the other to be annoyed best leave it alone the surest way not to put on the cap that might fit the most serious matters have arisen out of jests. Nothing requires more tact and attention. Before you begin to joke, know how far the subject of your joke is able to bear it. Because some fat kids just can't handle fat kid jokes. If you know, you know. Even if they're fat kids. Uh, effect on wisdom. Yes, Cat Ninja. Like, play the fool, but don't be the fool. It is easy to play the fool if you know that you're playing a part. It, it is harder for a fool to play the wisdom, which is why I, I say that Tom Hanks could play Forrest Gump who is essentially a retard. But if you got a real-life Forrest Gump, he could probably never play Tom Hanks because he doesn't have the capacity for understanding anything beyond his limitations. Ergo, it is easy to affect unwisdom as one who is wise than... It being fun. Uh, yeah, good natured ridicule. Yeah, I, I figured out what raillery was. Uh, these are the jokes. Uh, people like me and Puffer P might, you might think we're picking on you when we're doing raillery because uh, it's uh, some, sometimes the good nature of our jokes can be missed because, well, people don't like being joked on. So that's this last part. Like, before you begin to joke, know how far you can go with a joke because I've hurt people's feelings by taking shit too far. And that sucks because you didn't mean to hurt no one's feelings, but you did it anyway. <sighs> 242. Push advantages. Some put all their strength in the commencement and never carry a thing to a conclusion. 
they invent but never execute. These be paltering spirits. They obtain no fame, for they sustain no game to the end. Everything stops at a single stop. This arises in some form from impatience, which is the failing of the Spaniard. Take that, Spain. As patience is the virtue of the Belgian. Woohoo, go Belgium. The latter bring things to an end, the former come to an end with things. They sweat away till the obstacle is surmounted, but content themselves with surmounting it. They do not know how to push the victory home. They prove that they can, but will not. But this proves always that they cannot or have no stability. If the undertaking is good, why not finish it? If it is bad, why undertake it? Strike down your quarry if you are wise. Be not content to flush it. Finish what the fuck you start. That's literally what this is saying right here. Uh, do not be one of those people who uh, don't commit to labor. Buy something now. Pick it up, put it down two minutes later. Like, that's... Uh, that's not the way. Like, if you're going to be known for anything, you have to accomplish the things you set out to do. Don't begin a... Uh, a, a task and then quit because, well, it's too hard or it's too boring or it's this or it's that. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, uh, a thing, a thing. I almost, I was almost victim of this myself to myself uh, with the 48 Laws of Power. I started the 48 Laws of Power as, as a stream with, uh, it was me and Div's thing. And, uh, I got through four, uh, I got through four laws before shit fell apart. Like, I was kind of a douchebag and kind of ran off my co-host. And, uh, I wasn't committed to finishing. I really was not. I was pushed by a bunch of people who were expecting, like, with great anticipation, the finishing of that series. And it took me six months to get back to it. I just finished it, like, a month ago or something. I don't know. It was, like, it took almost a whole year to get through the damn thing. I'm happy that I finished it. Because it allowed me to go ahead and continue going with the channel. But I wouldn't have a YouTube channel today if I hadn't come back and finished that shit. I wouldn't have a growing Rumble presence if I hadn't done that first project. Like, was it the best work I'll ever do? Who knows? Probably not. I'll probably go on to do much better things than that. But it was the thing that got me going. Got the ball rolling, so to speak. And help me find my lane in this little U uh, YouTube space game. So I appreciate the fact that people held me to my obligations to finish the damn thing I started. Because it was very satisfying. The final day that that one was put down. <laughs> Two forty. Three, attention, all squabobs, this one is for you, squabob, aging squabob, do not be too much of a dove, squabob, we're talking to you, alternate the cunning of the serpent with the candor 
of the dove. Nothing is easier than to deceive an honest man. He believes in much who lies in naught. Who does no deceit has much confidence. To be deceived is not always due to stupidity. It may arise from sheer goodness. There are two sets of men who can guard themselves from injury. Those who have experienced it at their own cost and those who have observed it at the cost of others. Prudence should use as much suspicion as subtlety uses snares, and none need be so good as to enable others to do him ill. Combine in yourself the dove and the serpent, not as a monster, but as a prodigy. Bingo. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, uh, th this, this one was for Squab because that's the one thing I would say for him is he's, he's too pure of heart, too naturally uh, trusting and, and too much of a generous one. He could, he could have ill done to him through the nature of his goodness. And I would never want to see it. I would hate to see it. I also know Squab isn't going to listen to me because Squab is firm in his, uh, this whole book is the reason. Well, the funny part about worldly wisdom is it applies in so many different things that the whole damn book is a constant, like, lesson. And so far, I'm I'm actually scoring very low in having this worldly wisdom or being able to affect it anyway in my in my real life. Yes, I must protect the squab because the squab is just a baby bird. And it would not be able to protect itself. And it's also a pacifist. It's hard to imagine someone could do you wrong when you don't have the same meanness in your heart. Well, the fact of the matter is, those are the easiest people to take advantage of. Are the people who don't have the cunning of the serpent. And the, 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 they're good people. That's why, they're, that's why they can be taken advantage of. They, they don't lie, so they have no reason not to trust. They know nothing of the deceits. It's a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> 200 and... What is this? 44 already? Create a feeling of obligation. This sounds like a repeat of when we just... It's horrible. I trust, therefore I'm a target. Yeah, because you want to have faith in people that they're going to not be people. Unfortunately, they're people and they're a problem. Speaking of people, there are seven people on YouTube watching. Hello to all of you. Smash the like if you haven't. Hit the share button and tell a friend. Like, that would be the super most obliging thing you could do to help grow this channel so we can have this community. Uh, I I know we're never going to get to millions and millions of subs because we're, uh, well, we're just too high frequency for that. To the nine people watching on the X-Bird platform, it's good to see X-Bird finally waking up. Because usually that's only like two people watching at one time. So it's good to see a crew over there. To my squad, who is the Rumble Gang, all 11 of you, good evening to you. Smash the like button. And yeah, you tell friends too. Come hang hang out in Rumble. It's We've got cookies and stuff. I mean, I don't think we actually have cookies over there, but I'm going to keep telling people we have cookies. And when they show up, the disappointment will be, I mean... Incontrovertible. But man, oh man. What type of uh, 
what was the thing that we were not supposed to be mongering earlier? Uh, yeah, I'm not. It's the internet. Everything has cookies. <laughs> uh, absolutely, yeah. We have cookies, and you can even have them enabled and shit. Like you, I think you have to have them enabled or something. Create a feeling of obligation. Okay, two forty-four. Some transform favors received into favors bestowed, and theme or let it be thought that they are doing a favor when receiving one. There are some so astute that they get honor by asking and by their own advantage with applause from others. They manage matters so cleverly that they seem to be doing others a service when receiving one from them. They transpose the order of obligation with extraordinary skill or at least render it doubtful who has obliged whom. They buy the best by praising it, and make a flattering honor out of the pleasure they express. They oblige by their courtesy, and thus make men beholden for what they themselves should be beholden. In this way, they conjugate to oblige in the active instead of in the passive voice, thereby proving themselves subtle, uh, better politicians than grammarians. Ah, uh, politicians, we love them, don't we? I mean, I'm looking, I'm thinking about like, uh, actual, like, here's a good example. Jake and Logan Paul, 25 million, 25 million people watch that retarded bullshit. Most of them kids. Disgusting. Uh, I mean, I think about like big YouTubers that like, it's like how does this mindless content get so popular because things that are of a high value in nature these are not the things that are popular in current culture there's no value uh, ascribed to the type of conversations we're having here so yeah i may never have a milli because most people are watching some dumb ass shit i don't want a million subscribers i'd rather have my subscribers who are discerning and are here because they've got fully functional brains. But I know that they're going to be a more elite upper echelon of people. And there's not going to be that damn many of them. Fuck it. I'll take quality over quantity any day. Then they make bank off their products. My son begs for Mr. Beast chocolate bars and prime for his allowance. That's, see? That's the thing. Oh, shit. Cheers. Uh, meanwhile, I'm over here smoking reefer and talking philosophy with with my audience. Like, it's good. To, it's good to get you thinking, though. I like to think. <laughs> nah. Okay. Anyway, back to the politicians and grammarians. This is a subtle piece of finesse. A, sti a still greater is to perceive it and to retaliate on such fool's bargains by your paying in their own coin, and so coming by your own again. So get people to do shit and make it seem like you're doing them a favor. Ha! Huh. Brilliant. Okie dokie. 245. And this one has come up a lot. Original and out of the way views are signs of superior ability. We do not think much of a man who never contradicts us 
that is no sign he loves us, but rather that he loves himself. Do not be deceived by flattery, and thereby have to pay for it. Rather, condemn it. Don't blow smoke up my ass, just in case you were thinking about flattery burying me. Besides, you may take credit for being censured by some, especially if they are those of whom the good speak ill. On the contrary, well, I might actually be one of the people that the good speak ill of. Just saying. I'm pretty sure I'm the one who sent you that, idiot, so. And if I wasn't the first one, I definitely know I was at some point one who sent you that. And yes, that was that was a fantastic piece of work by the Flowbots. I wouldn't have ever expected them to be the type that would have a diss track. If you're not firm in your beliefs, you don't contradict. Be shaky for life. <sighs> On the contrary, it should disturb us if our affairs please everyone. For that is a sign that they are of little worth. Perfection is for the few. Amen. Just nailed it. That's exactly what I just said. Like, I'd rather have 500 YouTube subscribers that are sharing in the perfection that is for the few than a hundred thousand random as assorted NPC normie dipshits who are just here for drama or bullshit or nonsense. I could do some of the stupid shit that's super popular on the internet these days. I have too damn much pride for that. Perfection it doesn't exist. All views are different, but that's uh, the the aspiration of perfection is still for the few. Like quality over quantity, a hundred percent. I am aware that perfection is an illusion, but it isn't. By its nature, it's still not a admirable goal, even if completely unattainable. Two hundred forty six. Never offer satisfaction unless it is demanded. And why on earth would you want to do this? And if they do demand it, it is a kind of crime to give more than necessary. To excuse oneself before there is occasion to uh, is to accuse oneself. To draw blood in full health gives the hint to ill will. An excuse unexpected arouses suspicion from its slumbers. Nor need a shrewd person show himself aware of another's suspicion. Which is equivalent to seeking out offense. He had best disarm distrust by the integrity of his conduct. I have no idea what the fuck my man's is getting at here. I might need your help, chat, because, uh... Why would you never offer satisfaction? Why would you always want to keep on wanting more? To strive for something that doesn't exist seems like a doomsday every day. Try isn't hard and doesn't mean perfection. Yeah, what the fuck is where I'm at? Yeah, Cappy, like, it, that, <laughs> that is, uh, I mean, I, I get all the concepts that are in this, but I don't see the point. And usually I can get the point, but there's some, like, there's at least, like, one out of 20 of these that's just like, bro, what drugs were you on when you wrote this? 
Uh, he had best disarmed distrust by the integrity of his conduct. Well, if you know, you know. I got to reread. You can reread that a hundred times. I'm I'm as lost as can be right now. Uh, definitely don't give more than necessary, but to excuse oneself before there is occasion is to accuse oneself. Like, uh, be careful with people who demand satisfaction. Then, huh? This seems like a good good rule of thumb here. Ugh. <sighs> Hold on, I am lagging like a disaster. I might have to close some tabs because it seems like the browser is just giving me. So, shout out to the tabs that have to die. My goodness. Oh man, if I drop from the stream. I apologize in advance. Yeah, they're saying it's not worth your time. Well, how many things aren't it? Aren't worth your time, really? Okay. I think we're back and not lagging to death anymore. So let's just let that one go for now. And we'll come back to it never. Because that's a brain bender. Ah, uh, 247. We are really getting there now. Know a little more, live a little less. Some say the opposite. To be at ease is better than to be at business. I mean, I don't think I've ever met anyone who said... Uh, definitely wish I'd spent more time at work. That's a common phrase. Uh, nothing really belongs to us but time. Oh my. Write that down. Write that shit down. Which even he has, who has nothing else it is equally unfortunate to waste your precious life in mechanical tasks or in a profusion of important work do not heap up occupation and thereby envy Otherwise, you complicate life and exhaust your mind. Some wish to apply the same principle to knowledge, but unless one knows, one does not truly live. <sighs> I love that. And this one actually makes sense. Don't spend all your time working your ass off that you don't actually get to live and enjoy your damn life. Seriously, like, all you have is your time. And even he who has nothing at all has plenty of time. But what you spend that time doing... Indicative of like what type of value you have in your life. <sighs> so it is. Damn, this shit is getting really on my nerves. Like, I have killed pretty much every tab except for the stream yard. Like, and I'm still lagging like a bastard. Yeah, StreamYard in the book, like, my goodness, 
I guess it's trying to tell me that my time is up. But I'm not done yet. However, if it's going to keep acting like this, I might just have to, like, call it sooner rather than later. Oh, great. Now the whole damn thing's going to crash. Well, that'll be great. Oh, sorry, y'all. I mean, I'm trying to uh, keep carrying on. However, my entire browser has now frozen completely. I don't know if y'all can even still hear me or if StreamYard is going to drop my connection here. Because that's usually what happens. Uh, this is kind of bullshit. Oh my. Wait, are we still here? Okie dokie. We have survived a significant lag spike. Wow, that was painful. Like, I thought for sure we were going to drop off the face of the earth. I'm still trying to kill tabs because the lag is still not getting under control whatsoever so thank you all for bearing with me I really could probably stand to upgrade my system so that I don't have these type of issues I could probably use a few more gigabytes of RAM And we're back. We... Uh, everything is shit. 
uh, lagged so hard that I clicked all the buttons, including the StreamYard tab. Oops. <laughs> uh, at least our lag spike seems to be at least calming down. It's not even fully gone away. It's still lagging like a bastard. Lovely. How about try to get the book back? Shout out to everyone who stuck around through that nonsense. Uh, and we're back. Let's see if we can push on and get to 250. I might need somebody to check in on the Rumble Gang for me because that tab died. So we will be able to see who's left over there if anyone's still around. But anyway, shout out to the seven on YouTube and the eight on X. And whoever's still on Rumble, I love you too. Sorry the stream died so I can't tell who's there unless you type in the chat. Ah, uh, anywho. 248. Do not go with the last speaker. Ah, this, uh, this is an interesting little tidbit right here, I think. There are persons who go by the latest edition and thereby go to irrational extremes. Their feelings and desires are of wax. The last comer stamps them with his seal and obliterates all previous impressions. These never gain anything, or they lose everything so soon. Everyone dyes them with his own color. They are of no use as confidants. They remain children their whole life. Owing to this instability of feeling and volition, they halt along cripples in will and thought and totter from one side of the road to the other. These are the people who literally just believe whatever the hell they hear and then someone comes along and tells them something new and they believe that too. And mm. Still here, but going to sleep. We'll keep this dream up. But I have to try to get over this crud. Love you too, Inya. Uh, yeah, th thanks for coming. Uh, being here for most of the show. Like, I kind of like doing it earlier because it gives everyone a chance who would be going to bed to stop in for the show. But yeah. These people who just go along with whatever's the current thing, don't follow these people. Do not just support current thing. Use your, use your thinking me and be discerning. Yeah, that's a good call. <laughs> 249 is never begin life with what should end it. So, death. Never begin life with death. It, it shortens the life expectancy by a lot. Many take their amusement at the beginning, putting off anxiety to the end. But the essential should come first and accessories afterwards, if there is room. Others wish to triumph before they have fought. Others... Begin, begin with learning things of little consequence and leave studies that would bring them fame and gain to the end of life. Youth is wasted on the young because the young happen to be the stupid. Another is just about to make his fortune when he disappears from the scene. 
method is essential for knowledge and for life. So work on what's important first. Worry about the trivial shit afterwards if there's time and space for that. It's a really basic concept, but it's really good for building a so solid fundamental foundation. What you really need, a good foundation. <sighs> too fitty. When to change the conversation. When they talk scandal. When some all goes contrarywise. Yes, that is the word he chose to use here. Their no is yes and their yes, no. If they speak ill of a thing, it is the highest praise. For what they want for themselves, they depreciate to others. To praise a thing is not always to speak well of it. For some, to avoid praising what's good, praise what's bad. And nothing is good for him for whom nothing is bad. So be careful in these conversations. And be aware of how to steer them. You don't want all that ill talking and contrarian wise ism going on in your conversation. It messes up your discernment. Oh, dear goodness. So, I did say I wanted to start early in case we went a little over, and we are now at two hours in almost 45. I think getting to 250 is a pretty decent spot to stop. That leaves us 50 more of these things to go. Uh, 251 to 300. And we will try... Oh, we will try to finish this thing this week now. I think... I think it's doable. We need 25 on Wednesday and 25 on Saturday or any split of the two. Speaking of the schedule, speaking of the schedule, uh, we'll be back Wednesday night. I'm not sure exactly what time because I do like this earlier time. I'm not going to lie. This is a little bit easier on me, but I don't know what my schedule looks like then. So somewhere between 6 and 9 p.m. roughly. Like, that's the best I can do for now. I will try to get the schedule up as quickly as possible. Saturday at noon, though, 100%. Like, lock that one in. Uh, we'll be back, and we will finish this thing this week. Even if we got to do 10 on Wednesday and 40 on Saturday. But I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you all for coming, and shout-outs to all of y'all for adding your input and thought into the conversation. You guys make it way, way, way more fun than if I were to just read this by myself, which is why I love reading it with you guys. Uh, so shout out to all the new friends and all the old friends, everybody in the Rumble Land, the X-Bird, and the YouTube sphere. You, you're all my homies. Uh, so remember your seatbelts and sidearms. Stay strapped and or we'll get clapped. Like it is actually getting really crazy out there. And the more I watch the news, the more crazier it's getting. So be safe. Uh, keep your discernment head alert. And if things seem to be amiss, like tread lightly. Be be careful, y'all. I will catch y'all in the next one. And. Until then, I will see you in the wastelands. Darth Hideous, 